Hello, everyone. Welcome to the talk today for Accelerated and Standardized Deep Learning Friends with KFSLAB. The presenter today is Dan Song from, Ber from Bloomberg and David Groovy from NVIDIA. We have two agenda today. The first part, we will talk about Accelerated Deep Learning Friends with KFSLAB. The second part, we will talk about uh, KFSLAB V2 Inference Protocol. Deploying ML models at scale is one of the most challenges for companies willing to create values through AI. As models become more complex and, deep, uh, and more deep, this task becomes even harder. As a data scientist or ML engineer, I want to serve standardized uh, deep learning models like TensorFlow or PyTorch with minimal efforts and at scale in a unified way. I may also want to bring in custom pre and post processing before and after the inference. R running inference on deep learning models can be slower on CPU. I also want to accelerate the inference by deploying models onto GPUs. GPUs are powerful compute resource, but deploying a single model per GPU can underutilize GPUs. I want an easy way to serve multiple models behind a single unified endpoint, which can scale to hundreds to thousands of models. In order to save the computer resource, I will also want to auto scale based on the workload and allow me to scale down to zero when there's no traffic sent to the service. In order to ensure safe production routes, I, I want to deploy models with zero downtime and can use multiple deployment strategies like Shadow, Canary, and the Blue Green rollouts. In order to solve all these problems, Cave Serving is an open source project founded by Google, Seldom, Bloomberg, and Media, Microsoft, and IBM on the Kubeflow. Kubeflow was the perfect meeting ground for these companies. Cave Serving is following all the uh, open source principles built to build open and cloud native um, serving solutions. Cave Serving provides a Kubernetes custom resource for serving ML models across deep learning frameworks with a simple, intuitive, and consistent experience. It encapsulates the complex complexity of auto-scaling, networking, health checking, and server configuration to bring cutting-edge serving features like GPU auto-scaling and canary rows to your ML deployments. It enables a simple, pluggable, and uh, complete story for production ML serving, including pre-processing, prediction, and explanation. Cave Serving codifies the best practice of Kubernetes data patterns. With Knative, Cave Serving is able to enable serverless inference and automatically scale up and down according to the inference workload. Cave Serving extracts the common model serving features like request response logging, multi-model polling, um, batching into a sidecar agent so that all integrated model server can benefit from all these features. Cave Serving deployments are immutable. Every new deployment results in a new version, and the traffic is migrated over to a new version only after the new parts are ready and passing the readiness check to ensure safe production rollouts. It also employs various other uh, rod strategies such as canary and the progressive rollouts. The main Cave Serving components are Istio Ingress Gateway, Knative Auto Scaler, and Inference Service. Istio Ingress Gateway routes the external request to the inference service. Each inference service pod contains two or three containers depending on the features enabled on inference service YAML. The main containers in the, in the key in, inference service pod are QProxy, Cave Serving Agent, and Model Server. After the ingress, the request first hits the QProxy, which infers the concurrency limit and in timeout. It then goes through an optional sidecar agent if request response logging and batching are enabled. The request finally hits the model server for inference. The model server for each framework implements um, REST or gRPC handlers and can load multiple models. The so inference service parts can be auto-scaled based on CPU or inference workload with KPA. KF Serving 0.5 release promotes the inference service API version from v1 alpha 2 to v1 beta 1. It supports a standard inference for TensorFlow, PyTorch, SKLN, SGBoost, and ML frameworks. It also provides SDK for user to plug in custom components while still benefit all the common serving features from Cave Serving. The V1 Beta 1 API further simplifies and enables a data science friendly interface 
and also maintains the flexibility Kubernetes pod template spec provides. In about a few, uh, a few YAML lines, you could describe all the infrastructure you need to get up your, uh, your models up and running. On the other hand, user can still specify advanced features we need to. Kf Serving not only provides a unified interface for control plan, it also tries to standardize the data plan protocol across ML frameworks, which we will cover later. Since 0 0.5, we also added the multi-model serving capability to improve the resource utilizations. For TensorFlow models, Kf Serving uses the TF Serving as the underlying model server which is a flexible high-performance serving solution which supports stable model format and graph depth. TF Serving uses the TensorFlow REST and gRPC prediction protocol, which is similar to KF Serving V1 protocol. For PyTorch models, KF Serving integrates TorchServe, which provides an easy way to serve both eager model and the TorchScript model, which can serve the model without a Python environment. KF Serving is work currently working with TorchServe to conform to the KF Serving V2 prediction protocol. In V1 Beta 1 API, we mainly support three components, predictor, transformer, and explainer. Predictor is a required component, and the fields on predictor is mapped to Kubernetes deployment part template fields, such as replica, service count, node affinity. On the predictor, user can specify the model framework, which naturally maps to container fields like command, arguments, environment variables. Same applies to the transformer and explainer component. NVIDIA Triton Inference Server provides a cloud inference solution optimized on NVIDIA uh, GPUs. The server supports multiple deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, with both REST and gRPC endpoints. It supports model repo with versioning and allow multiple models to run simultaneously on the same GPU while with batching support. On inference service spec, the storage URI is pointed to um, the model, model repo, which can contain multiple models. As you can see from spec, we also set the OMP num threads in environment variable to improve the inference performance and re reduce the resource contention as by default, PyTorch spawns number of OpenMP uh, threads same as the number of cores available on the node, which could overload the CPU as the default CPU limit on, for inference service part is one. You can also choose to uh, schedule the uh, tracking inference pod on GPUs by specifying uh, it on specified GPU under resource section. You can also choose to add node affinity or tolerance to schedule to a particular node such as T4 GPU. As you may know, Bloomberg's customer service is an essential part of Bloomberg Terminal. Our representatives work very hard to provide the best customer service to our clients by answering questions with high quality and fast speed. The reps are pushed the content to help answer questions in the smart resource window. This use case is powered by our fine-tuned BERT model and deployed onto Kev Serving on production. For the fine-tuned stage, the data we are using are categorized and annotated FAQs, which gives us half a million question pairs. The problem is formulated as question similarity with inputs of two questions and output as a similarity score. The BERT model is saved using um, export saved model API, which contains complete TensorFlow program, including word weights and a computation. It does not require the original model building code to run, which makes it useful for sharing and deploying. As you know, BERT model uh, at inference time requires significant computation time and doing this on CPU can be slow which can take a second, often the time can take seconds. This posed a challenge to uh, meet the latency requirement for this, real time, for this real time use case. Deploying the BERT model to meet all the production requirement is a challenging task. You need to take all latency throughput, scaling, health check, safe rollout, monitoring, all into consideration. And, and also how can you scale to serve hundreds of BERT models with your limited res GPU resources? First, to accelerate the BERT inference, we deploy the fine-tuned model on Kf Serving with TensorFlow Serving component, which expects the tensor input. Since the user input here is the question pair in text, we also deploy the Kf Serving transformer for the sentence segmentation and tokenization. Kf Serving then automatically wells up the call to uh, TF Serving. 
In this way, you can scale transformer and predict it differently. Why deploy as a why also you can deploy it as a single unit. By deploying the model on GPUs, we achieve 20x speed up. We also experiment deploying the BERT model um, on NVIDIA Triton Infant Server, which achieved the similar performance gains. We have tested the performance on NVIDIA uh, V100 GPUs with 24 layer FP16 BERT squad model. By deploying a BERT model on GPU, we can get to 15 milliseconds, which usually takes two to second, three seconds to run inference on CPU. On a single Triton inference server pod loaded with BERT model, the latency increases linearly with the concurrency without batching the request. We can scale up the Triton inference server instance automatically with KF serving. As you can see from the previous table, you get the best performance when container concurrency is low. So here we try to set the container concurrency to one and let Knative auto scalar scale up the inference service part automatically based on the infrared, infrared re concurrent request within a time window. By setting container concurrency to one, the inference service part auto scan automatically scales up when container reaches to the max concurrency. In this experiment, the perf client generates the inference service request to your model and measures the throughput and latency over a time window and repeats the re measurement until it gets stable value. For example, when the observed uh, infrared request is 5, it scales up to 5 plus to handle the concurrency. From the result table, you can see that the average latency for higher concurrency can maintain as low as when concurrency is low. There are some latency spike which are caused by the Pod code startup time, which includes model downloading and uh, pod spawning time. When container concurrency is specified, Knative active array is also injected on the request path to do smart load balancing to make sure container is not overloaded with requests more than the configured lim concurrency limit. As you can see, the throughput does not scale linearly perfectly because of the inference service uh, code startup time. One way to alleviate the issue is to cache the model on PVC after downloading from the remote storage so that the models can be directly mounted, uh, mount, mounted onto all parts. GPU auto scaling based on GPU metrics can be hard. Knative implements a request volume based auto scaler, which allows you to uh, scale to and from zero both on CPU and GPU. The number of paths needs to scale up the load is calculated by the infrared request and the concurrency target. If the container concurrency can handle five requests concurrently and your infrared requests are 50, then Knative automatically scale to 10 paths. Batch inference is a process of aggregating inference requests and sending, sending this aggregated request through the uh, DR framework for inference all at once. Cave Serving was designed to natively support batching of incoming inference requests. The functionality enables you to use your compute resource optimally because most DR frameworks are optimized for batch requests. You can configure max batch size and max latency on inference service batch section. The Cave Side Cry agent then knows the maximum batch size that the model can handle and the maximum time the agent should wait to fulfill uh, each batch request. On the inference service spec, user can also enable scale down to zero to save compute resource after batch is done. Over the time, you need to both you need both pre and post processing before and after the inference. Cave Serving provides the SDK to user to easily implement a transformer, which can communicate to model server with a standardized data plane protocol, which expects tensor in and a tensor out. Transformer and a predictor can also be deployed and rolled out as a single unit. In future, KF Serving also plans to support a few outbox transformer like text tokenization and image transformation. KF Serving allows chaining transformer with any inference server. Here, we can easily swap to use different model server as long as they speak the same data plane pro protocol. The preprocess handler transforms the raw data into the tensor according to the V2 data plane protocol. And you can see the post, uh, post process handler transforms the raw prediction um, into a response for downstream consumption. The transformer does not enforce a particular data schema. It could be a list of text or images. 
The primary single model on GPU can underutilize the precious GPU resources. TF serving, touch serve, Triton all allow co locating multiple models onto the same GPU in the container. The two requests arrive simultaneously, one for each model. They can be scheduled onto the same GPU and work on both inference computation parallel. TF serving as a train model, custom resource to enable scheduling models onto the inference service at scale, which abstracts away the model placement logic away from the user. The models that are placed on the same inference service custom resource can be assessed from the same service URL. With the Kafka serving multi model serving design, we started to decouple inference service and model artifacts. Train the models can be placed onto an inference service before it reaches the configured memory limit. Kafka serving train the model scheduler can spawn new shards for the inference service to host models at scale. It also uh, send calf check probes to each model endpoint to reflect the model deployment status on trained model's customer resource. On trained model customer resource, user assign the model to a given inference service. User also specify the model storage UI and a model framework. The memory resource estimation is used for scheduling models onto the inference service based on the capacity left of given inference service shard and the scheduler automatically spawn new shards to host the new models if all current shards are at capacity. The trained model scheduler decides which service shard to place the model and writes the model configuration into the shard config map. The cave serving sidecar agent then reconciles the config map to pull new models and remove deleted models in the model repo that is mounted onto the pod. The agent then sends a signal to the model server to load and load the model. After the model is successfully loaded on the model server, it can then be assessed from a unified service endpoint with the model name specified on the UIO path. While we developed in multi-model serving, we hit a few uh, scalability issues as well. For a single is still ingress gateway, we handle limits about running uh, 2,000 services, but we want to actually scale to 100K models. Can we support a 100K train model customer resource? We actually bound by the um, customer resource limit on KSDD. Even we can deploy 100K models on 2000 service, we may still hit the limit of the number of scratch services we can create on the gateway for routing the models. So the phase two uh, multi-model survey is to find out these limits. We are excited that KF serving uh, 0 0.5 is released with the V1 uh, beta 1 API and Triton with V2 protocol. And here you can check the V1 beta 1 IFC, uh, IFC doc. Um, Multi-model serving is in alpha steps, and the next step is to make, to, uh, make it a production ready. Kev Service is an open community, so we love your con contributions, and you're welcome to join our uh, bi-weekly um, um, working group meeting. And here's the GitHub and example uh, links. Thank you. Uh, I will hand over to uh, David Gooding for the second part. Hi, my name is David Goodwin. I'm going to be talking about the KF Serving Inference Protocol version 2. You might have also heard this called the uh, V2 Data Plane Protocol. So um, before we talk about the specifics of the protocol, let's uh, look at kind of the domain where this protocol is important and is meant to be used. So the diagram here shows kind of a representative way of deploying um, can I uh, say a containerized inference server. So in the gray box on the right, you see there's this inference server that is capable of performing deep learning or machine learning inferences uh, on behalf of whatever clients there are. And it is, uh, it is inside of uh, some kind of uh, deployment environment. It has access to the model repository, which is holding all the different models that it might need to serve. And uh, there are also maybe some load balancers and some autoscalers, et cetera. Those, those aren't required. This is just showing kind of a representative example. And then on the left, you see there's some clients. So these are clients uh, that want to directly or indirectly take advantage of some deep learning or some machine learning models. And so they can communicate 
for example, maybe there's an ASR, an automatic speech recognition kind of service that they want to use, which will in turn need to do some inferencing. And there could be multiple of these workloads. And again, there can be load balancers and in and, and, and the deployment. Um, the protocol is concerned about how the clients communicate with the workloads and also how the workloads then communicate with the uh, inference services themselves. And the protocol is meant to be a single protocol that can be used in um, any of these areas. So uh, given that background, um, for the, the KF serving inference protocol, uh, why do we need this standard? Well, like most reasons why you need a standard, uh, you want the, say, the inference clients, which in the previous diagram were the, the things on the left that needed to use some inferencing. Um, you want them to be able to talk to multiple different servers or services to increase their portability to make them more interchangeable. Uh, and on the server side, you want to allow as many different types of clients as possible, maybe ones that weren't originally meant, written even to use your server, to be able to use your server or service, and that increases the utility of your service. Uh, and of course, you want them to operate seamlessly on all sorts of platforms like KF Servings, which is standardized around this protocol. So some of the high-level requirements uh, are to support, support both ease of use and high performance, which we'll talk about some. Uh, they need to be extensible. So the KF Serving protocol I'll talk about is has a core protocol, which is kind of the required part. But there's a uh, extension mechanism in it that allows either for in the future there to be uh, standard extensions added to it, so optional parts of the, of the core, or uh, you could have a server, we'll see like server-specific ones, which are individual inference servers can decide to implement their own extensions. And uh, there needs to be both a gRPC and an HTTP REST, and a JSON-based implementation for this, which we'll look at also in a minute. So I mentioned there's the core protocol and the extension. The core protocol, which we'll go through in some detail, is required for all conforming servers. So if you want to, if you want to write an inference server and you want to say that your inference server supports the KF serving inference protocol, you need to implement all these. And they include uh, endpoints to understand if the server is live and ready, to get uh, kind of metadata about the server. And then for all the models that are available on the server, all the deep learning and machine learning models that are available, whether the model is ready, uh, and, and metadata about the model. And of course, the primary uh, reason for doing all this, there needs to be an inferencing endpoint to allow you to actually perform inferencing. And then again, extensions are optional. And currently the standard doesn't have any, uh, there's no standard extensions. So there's no optional parts of the core. Um, but we'll see there are, some extensions have been implemented by uh, specific inference servers. In particular, we're going to look at some, the Triton inference server has implemented some extensions and we're going to talk about those briefly. Okay, so the liveness and the readiness <clears throat> endpoints. Some, you, together, you could think of these as the health endpoints. And uh, on the server side, there's two, two different endpoints that you can see whether the server is live and or ready to receive requests. Uh, and so for instance, in something like Kubernetes, you can directly use these for liveness probe and readiness probe. Um, and on the model side, there's just a ready, and that can be used to indicate if the model is ready to receive requests. Uh, and so this is some example here. Again, there's an HTTP uh, REST style uh, version of this protocol, and it just returns for these, returns that uses the HTTP status code to indicate whether something is live or ready. <clears throat> uh, and here we're asking if the server is live, uh, and you get an OK back, so that means the server is live. GRPC side has, you know, it's very similar. It's, of course, it's using uh, the RPC style, but there's a server live, and it, it would turn a, a bull, a true false response that would indicate whether the server was live. All right, so let's move on. Metadata is another core part of the protocol. Uh, and the server metadata is, you know, things like name, versions, what extensions are supported. The model metadata is uh, more interesting. You can kind of ask, so what, you know, for a given model that's on the server, you can, you can find out what versions of the model are available. Uh, the protocol allows, you know, the server to have multiple versions of the same model. And then, you know, most importantly, maybe what input tensors are you required to send into the model and what outputs can you get back? And for the inputs, you can see here, I'm showing for this example and, and going forward here, I'm just going to kind of show the, uh, 
kind of the JSON HTTP uh, examples. The gRPC, uh, protobuf based gRPC examples are very similar, it's just a kind of different syntax. So I'm not gonna bother to show both. Um, so here you can see from the URL we're using, uh, the v, slash v2 is slash models uh, slash resnet uh, gives us the metadata for the resnet 50 model. <clears throat> we see that there's just one version, version one is available. It's a TensorFlow graph def model, uh, which is just the type. So the platform is a, a type of the machine learning or deep learning um, framework or uh, representation for this model. Uh, that's kind of informative. One of the advantages of the of the protocol, of course, is that it's, um, it's the same protocol. You you send you use the inputs and output tensors, and you communicate with the servers the same way, no matter what the actual underlying machine learning or deep learning model is. Uh, but for informational purposes, it's there. Inputs, in this case, there's only one input and one output on this model, and you get the name of the input, the shape, and the data type, uh, which is very important because this allows you then as a client. You can then, if you want to discover, like, well, what's you know, what kind of data shape of the data is expected and what data type, you can get that from the metadata. And similarly for the outputs, it'll tell you what type of uh, output tensors are going to be returned to you and their their shape and their data type. So, and now for the again the primary um, uh, uh, endpoint or API that's in the protocol, of course, is for the inferencing. And again, this is just showing the HTTP, uh, the REST style, um, but here's the endpoint. Again, we saw before V2 models ResNet 50. So for the ResNet 50 model, we want to do an inference. There's that infer there. And in this case, this is the ResNet 50 model. Um, we're gonna send in, this is just a picture I picked. Um, and so ResNet 50 is, if you're not familiar, is an image classification, uh, is a very famous image classification um, deep learning model. And it takes in, uh, a an image in this case you can tell just by the shape this is this is uh, 224 by 224 so a very small image with three channels and uh, and it'll do a classification resonant 50 will do a classification and, and out of and, and tell you what that image is and in this case resonant 50 it's been trained with the image net uh, data set which there's like a thousand different uh, uh, objects it recognizes. And one of them you can see from here. So we, on the left here, you see the post, post this, um, we send in the input and um, tell the shape that we're sending in and the data here, I didn't list all the data because we're going to talk about that. There's a lot of data. So just, but there would be just an array of the JSON array of the data. Um, and there'll be, you can tell from the shape, there'll be 224 times 224 times three elements in this data array which is a lot. Uh, and then the output coming back, this is what the protocol requires, the format that's required by the protocol that the server needs to respond with, you know, re repeating back the model name and version, and then giving you the outputs back. And the outputs in this case, you can see the name of it there, um, and the shape, it's just a, a single element. And in this case, it's a single element that tells you the classification of this item, and it's a coffee mug. So it did quite well actually on that, on that classification. And so here, by looking at this example, we can see, you know, the inference protocol, like the other pro the other ones I just talked about earlier, it's very simple. Very simple, it's just the necessary kind of basic uh, information that needs to be sent to uh, the inferencing server and back. And all based around having input tensors and output tensors um, with their data types and shapes. So, um, Let's take a, so that's the core protocol we just talked about. The, again, the required core parts of the protocol that every conforming server must implement. And in doing that, in implementing that, the, uh, you'll have a server that can talk to in, in any client that also implements a protocol for any type of deep learning or machine learning model that that supports and send in the tensors, get back the results in kind of a standard seamless way, which satisfies the primary requirements of, of, the, of the protocol or any kind of standard protocol for that matter. So um, Triton Inference Server here. Triton Inference Server is an open source uh, inference server. I have a reference link uh, later on if you're interested in taking a look at it. But it's, it implements the, both the HTTP REST and the gRPC KF Serving Inference Protocols. 
It's a multi-framework, multi-model. It supports GPU and CPUs. So multi-framework, I mean, if you have a TensorFlow or a PyTorch or uh, an Onyx model, again, that all those types of uh, frameworks are supported for inside the inference server. It implements, again, the core, so it's a conforming server. It also has some extensions, and so briefly I'm going to talk about extensions here. So the core um, is completely sufficient that we just talked about is completely sufficient for making an inference server. However, especially in the area of performance, it can be lacking, especially for the HTTP protocol or prim primary for the HTTP protocol. So the extensions that uh, Triton implements, there's some per model statistics. So you'll notice in the core uh, protocol, there was no way say to find out from the server how many inferences possibly had been performed for a particular model or you know how long on average were those taking that you know kind of statistics like that uh, Triton adds an extension that provides that information also an extension for model repository management so not only can you query which models are available on the server but you can load and unload those models or load new models and unload models uh, also in, as an extension in Triton there's support for stateful inferencing um, which uh, is a lot of language models and other models that are implemented, say, with an RNN type, type uh, implementation where there's state in the model. And so you have to, the order of the inferences received is very important. There's support for that. Uh, for performance, now the last two items are primary performance bullets. Um, tensors, as we saw in the example uh, above, you actually send the tensor data is part of the JSON message. That can be very expensive, sending that over the network. And so you, if, you're, if you're communicating to the Triton inference server on the same system from another process on the same system, you can instead communicate by system shared memory or by uh, GPU shared memory. And that then you don't have to send the raw data over the, uh, over, actually over the network, even local network, um, in, or, and you don't have to encode it say into JSON or into a gRPC protobuf. You don't have to do that encoding decoding. You can just access it directly in memory. And similarly, the, the last one, which is just a, an extension that only applies to the HTTP REST part of the protocol, is a way to communicate tensors using binary data, still going over the network, not using shared memory, but a much more efficient way. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, so, and I, I call this one out. So for all the extensions I just showed here, again, these are extensions. Uh, they are optional. And so the uh, uh, servers don't have to implement these. In fact, they're not part of the standard anyway. They're just Triton specific. Servers could implement these. They're uh, Triton's open source. These are the, the, um, the specs for all these is published. And I, again, I have a link later. Uh, but again, they're optional parts. However, the, in particular, the, I want to call it the HTTP JSON, uh, the HTTP REST, the JSON implementation for high performance. If we look at, if we go back on the, on the, we have this binary data extension in Triton, which resolves a very important problem. So if you look at the code on the left or the, the output on the left where we post, this is the same what we did before, where we posted, um, we sent in a single small image, a 224 by 224 with three channel image, which is quite small. There's still 150,000 FP numbers in this data array, which of course I didn't list them all. Uh, and so, that's a lot, <laughs> and that's just for a single small image. And the problem is that this is very readable, right? It's very usable. I mean, a lot. It's easy to generate this JSON in a lot of different clients, a lot of different languages, a lot of different cool toolkits can already do all this stuff. However, to do that, you first have to. So, if you have these, this image or this 224 by 224 by three set representation of this image as floating point numbers you first have to basically encode them into strings, so print them basically. So that's, that's time consuming. And then you send them over the wire to the server, which is on, um, you know, on the other end. And then it has to read this JSON. It's basically just a string, right? So it has to actually parse these strings into floating point numbers, 150,000 of them just to do uh, your inferencing. And so that becomes a huge bottleneck, basically makes for any, any, unless your model has very small uh, input and output tensors, um, or if you know you just don't really care, this is a research model or something on the side, you don't you know perform doesn't matter to you, then this is not really uh, acceptable. It's not really useful for a production kind of deployment. But still, the advantages 
again, going to the ease of use, you know, this JSON is very easy to generate and there's a lot of advantages to doing it this way. Uh, but so let's, can we combine those? And so this binary data extension does just that. So on the right, we can see using the binary data extension, basically the, the header part, the JSON part is more or less the same, except you have this extra parameter in here, which you basically say that, hey, um, I'm not giving you the data here in JSON. It's just, but I'm just telling you how big it's going to be, uh, which is a little bit redundant, but we, that's done intentionally just to be redundant. And then you just, after the JSON message, uh, is just the raw binary data. And there is an extra um, header required in your post just to, so the server can figure out where the, the JSON metadata header is, separating it from the actual raw data. But in doing this, now there's no more, you're still sending, um, you know, 602,000 bytes of data. You can't, that's, that's kind of unavoidable. That's actually your image. You have to send it over. But there's no uh, encoding or uh, decoding overheads. Uh, the data can just be pulled right off the wire and kind of sent right into the into the model. So and, and so, for instance, this is just one data point uh, running on a um, running on a local network. So actually, it's minimizing the. Uh, it's kind of removing the network part of this. If we send uh, 128 of these requests and time that. Uh, just to kind of even it out and make sure there's no blips. Uh, you know, doing the binary data really has like a 17x speed up, a huge amount. So you kind of remove that bottleneck from, from the problem. So uh, that, again, that's an important example to show how the protocol, through its extensions in this case, but in general, the protocol does allow the usability and because of the flexibility of the protocol, you can have extensions like this that also allow you, along with say the shared memory, to get great uh, performance as well. And so, as I mentioned, there's a couple of references here in closing. One is to the protocol itself. Uh, you can find it in the KF Serving uh, GitHub. Uh, and you know, comments are, are welcome on that. Take a look at it. And then for Triton, uh, this is a link that you can see from this GitHub, you can find actually the full Triton repo. But this link directly takes you to the extensions and the uh, inferencing protocols that Triton implements. Thank you.